So I'm going to show you how I test my React code that uses Apollo and makes GraphQL requests. Right here I have some code from the Stripe series that I wrote and I have a query that we're calling for it. So we're fetching the current user and then with this data we are rendering a different thing or a different component. So if we don't get a user uh, we redirect them to the login page. Um, if they currently have not purchased a product, we show them a screen where they can subscribe. Otherwise, we show them a screen where they can see their credit card number and some other stuff. So I'd like to test this component. And to do this, we need to handle this query at the top here. So how can we do this? Well, I like to use two things when testing my React and Apollo code. The first is React testing library. So this is going to handle how I test my React code. And then there's the second one. So React Apollo has a testing utils that you can use, and I import it like that. And there's a mocked provider um, or mocked response. This is just the type for it. So it's really this mocked provider that I use. Um, and using those two together, I've noticed a pretty good uh, testing setup. So it looks like this. So I create a one-time function, which is called custom render. And this is how I actually render uh, the components that I want to test. And so this is something that is basically my own take on what is in the documentation for the React testing library. So it's very similar to it. And then I just added the mocked provider. So this allows me to mock the responses from Apollo. So I can mock the GraphQL requests that come back. Um, and the way I do this is you just pass in, this is an array of mocked responses, which we're going to take a look at what that looks like. So we just pass that in, and then here I'm just saying the type name is false. This is because I'm not requesting the underscore underscore type name in my queries and mutations. And then you'll notice I'm also integrating this in with React Router because I'm currently using that with my, pro my project. And so you saw, for example, I am redirecting. So to be able to use this redirect component, I need to have it wrapped in uh, that and then again, I'm just using the switch because that's what I'm using in my code as well and switches from react router DOM You'll notice I'm also creating a history object here where I allow them to pass in a history object if they want to uh, And then I return that back and I'm importing this from history and I'm using a create memory history So this is good for testing and the reason why I'm creating this is I can actually keep track of the current location and whatnot Which we'll see in a second um, and then we're just calling the render method from React Testing Library, and we use this. So you have to set up a function like this, and basically you just provide what you want to wrap your each test in. And then here's what the test looks like. So up here at the top, I have what a mock looks like, but we'll talk about that in a second. Why don't we look at a test? So the first thing I'm testing here is for a current uh, a paid user. So we'll take a look at this test right here. So what I want is I want to make sure that uh, this part works, that we show actually the correct credit card number. So what I'm doing is I'm using that custom render function that I showed you. I'm passing in my account component, and then I'm passing in the mock that I want. Um, and then we can go look at what that mock is now. So this mock, I pass in the query that I want to mock. In this case, it's the me query. You'll notice the me query um, is the same one that I'm using over here. Um, and then I'm not passing it in any variables for this particular query. It doesn't need it. And then here I'm just passing what I expect. So result and data is usually always going to be there. And then here's what's going to change. So I'm going to be returning something. The query is called me, so I put me there. And then here's the response I expect. And this just matches what it looks like in my query. So I expect ID, email type, and credit card number, the last four digits. So I put those values here. All right, so then what happens is I can render my account component. Uh, and then you'll notice it actually has to load. And uh, this is coming from the Apollo docs. You can actually wait for the loading to finish. Uh, I just created a function for that, wait for the data. Um, and that just means it's going to finish loading. And so to do that, all we do is make a function here that returns a promise. And the promise is just going to set a timeout. Basically, what this is doing is it's setting a timeout for zero seconds. And it's just allowing um, the loading to finish up. And then it shows the data. So when we see the data, basically I'm looking for a component with the test ID CC number, and then I'm making sure the content has the uh, credit card number I expect. And then if we notice down here, I actually added a test ID, so I could select this div just to make it easier. Um, I could also probably select it by text, but either way, 
and then I was just making sure we got the correct credit card number. Uh, next one, I, I tested for the free trial. So uh, I had made another mock for that. And you'll notice I just set the uh, type here to free trial and the credit card number to null for this particular user. And again, using the me query there. So I pass that in as uh, to my custom renderer. And then here I'm just looking, uh, I'm waiting for the data to load. And then I expect to see a component that says pay with credit card. So I'm just looking that up by text and making sure that it's defined. Uh, and then lastly, uh, I'm not actually sure the entirely best way to do stuff with React Router. I'm still kind of playing with it, but this is one setup I have right now is I want to check and make sure the redirect happens. So we have a third mock and that just has the me as null. Um, and then uh, here I'm getting the history back. I'm waiting for stuff to load or the redirect to load. And then here I'm saying history.location.path name. So I'm checking where we're currently located and I'm just making sure it redirected us to login because that's where I expect it to be redirected to. Um, and now when I actually test this code, so if I say yarn test, I actually get a little bit of a warning. Uh, and in regard to the React router, it says you're currently redirected to the same route. Um, I was able to get rid of that just by wrapping this in a router. So, or sorry, not a router, but just a route. So I can say route and import that from React Router DOM. And then here I can just say the path is gonna be a slash. And then I'm just gonna say render and then pass in a function. So here we just have a route that renders on the index route. So when the router first begins, it's gonna render it and we're just rendering the account. Uh, and that gets rid of the warning for me. So this might be the best way uh, to do that. But uh, this is how we check pretty much that uh, we can redirect. So this is one way. Curious if you guys know a better way to do a test with your React router. This seems to be working pretty well for me. Um, but yeah, so this is how I test my Apollo code. Uh, and basically, I just mock the responses out um, and then use React testing library to test things and use uh, Jest to expect stuff. One other thing I thought I'd mention is I was using a fragment in this query before and uh, the React mock did not like it. So uh, this mock provider didn't like it. It looked like there was an, there was an issue up on the Apollo uh, about it. So I just took the fragment out for now. It got a bunch of warnings. There's probably a way around it, but I just figured I'd remove it for now. So if you get a bunch of warnings because your queries or mutations are using fragments, that's what it's about. Um, and you know, I use fragments in a lot of my code too. Maybe I just set it up wrong, but it should be working. Anyway, that's how I set it up. Thanks for watching.